today is such a great day to be alive. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. You in the building today that lets you know that God is not still done with you yet. Yes. And we got so much to be thankful for. Yes. 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 Didn't have to be here. Yes. Right, every last one of us woke up this morning. We woke up because God is still working on us. Yes. Yeah. 
that sustains me. Yes. Amen. Yes. It is him that sustains each and every one of us. Yes, Hallelujah. All right. It is 1035 or 1040 by my watch. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make this uh, real quick. All right. As you can see, the title of my message is A Blameless More Effective Ministry. And we're going to get into, uh, I want to talk about that as we get into the message why I chose this. And I'll, and I'll tell you, uh, up, up until actually this week, my title was something totally different, but God steered me in a different direction. Amen. But we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with Matthew chapter 26, uh, verse, uh, we're reading verses 31 through 36. And that is basically uh, uh, my uh, foundational scriptures that I'm going to look through this morning, and we're going to go some other places. And I, like I said, I'm going to try to get through these uh, pretty quickly because I, there's a lot that I want to show you this morning. Amen? Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. I'll start at verse 31. Uh, and this is right after what we uh, commonly refer to as the uh, Last Supper when Jesus uh, had a, a communion with the uh, disciples. Verse 31. Then Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So right out the gate, we see here an Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled in the New, Just in the New Testament that Jesus is talking about. And I'm not going to go there, but you'll see that Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 13 and 7. Now, uh, that word offended, when Jesus said, all ye shall be offended, that word offended is translated being confused. All of you will be confused and some translation says ashamed. So Jesus said, all ye shall be confused and ashamed of me tonight. Now, next verse. He says, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Verse 33. But Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, mm -hmm. that this night before the cock crow, mm -hmm. thou shalt deny me thrice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter said unto him, mm -hmm. Though I should die, die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. <clears throat> then uh, verse 36. Now these next few verses before I get to verse, verse 36. These next few verses I've heard misquoted several times and I'm going to use something that apostle says all the time. Uh, I've heard misquoted several times in school and ministry apostle would, would uh, 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 change a word or two when we have our school and ministry. And he does that to see if we're paying attention to what is being said. <laughs> because he wants us to be held accountable for the word for ourselves. Amen. And we all know that. Amen. He don't want any and everybody to just be telling us something and we take and believe yes. what, everything that we hear. He wants to see it, know it for ourselves. Amen. And I like the fact that he holds us accountable in that way. Yes. But these next couple of verses, I'm going to tell you, I have heard misquoted, mis, misread uh, several times by several men. I'm not just saying a few, but several men and women in the gospel. Now, uh, so to speak. So uh, I call it throwing curveballs because that's what apostle called it. Yeah. We've been throwing these these curveballs and yeah. and a yeah. whole lot of times we swing and miss yeah. Yeah. these curveballs because we look at it for ourselves. Yeah. All right, all right. Verse thirty six. Now listen to the language. I'm using apostles. I'm, I, you know, when you're around so long, it's like acting like. 
Now listen to the language in this right here. Then Jesus came, or then come of Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here. Jesus is talking to the disciples. Sit ye here while I go and pray not. Uh -huh. Jesus is telling his disciples, y'all sit here uh -huh. while I go pray not. Okay? <laughs> That's number one. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee uh -huh. and began to be very sorrowful. So he had all his disciples together. And he said, y'all sit here while I go pray yonder. Then he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he said, okay, we're going to go a little bit further. All right? And uh, then he said unto them, my soul, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. This is what now... He's not telling this to all the disciples. He's right. just telling this to Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Yeah. All right? All right. Terry, ye here and watch with me. Let me read that again because I don't think y'all heard me. Terry, ye here and pray with me. Yeah. Uh, watch. I just threw y'all a curveball. I'm glad y'all caught that. All right? Terry, ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep. And said unto Peter, What? Could you not pray with me? Could you not watch with me one hour? Uh -huh. Y'all caught that. Yeah. I've heard preachers say over and over and over again, What? Could you not pray with me one hour? Now I believe the I believe their intentions are good when they do that because they try to guilt the saints into praying more. But there are several scriptures that you can use right. if you want to get the saints to pray more. Right. Right. Like prayer without ceasing. Amen. Man ought to always pray and not That's the saints. Right. But right. not this scripture here, because not this scripture this. is totally different. Right. Now let me ask you this question right here. Jesus never once told his disciples to pray for him or pray with him. He said, watch. watch. And that word watch, let me give you a, a definition. Watch here is, is, uh, is translated in the Greek word Gregorio and Agrublio, which means to stay awake and be sleepless. Another definition is to be alert, be vigilant, and on guard. Pay attention. Stay woke. But Jesus never once said, pray with him or pray for him. Amen. Now, I have to ask this question because a lot of preachers think that he said pray for him or pray with him. Why do you think Jesus said didn't ask him to pray for him? I'm going to tell you why. For one, the disciples had no clue. No clue whatsoever what Jesus was about to endure. Amen. Although he had Although Jesus had um, Jesus had already gave them an outcome of his death in verse two, and let me look at that. Let me show you that real quick. He already gave them the outcome of his death in verse two. Verse two says, "You know, after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the son of Man, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified." So he already gave him the outcome that he's going to be crucified. That was in verse 2. He gave an outcome of his burial. That was in verse 12. Verse 12, when they, when they, when they uh, uh, the, 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 the girl with the alabaster box, she uh, anointed Jesus with the oil, and they was, the, the disciples were tripping about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> For in that she have poured this ointment on my body, 
She did it for my burial. Amen. All right. He already gave him an outcome about his burial. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. And he gave him an outcome of his resurrection found in verse 32. We read that, but after that, after I am risen, yes. I will go uh, before you in Galilee. Mm -hmm. So he had already gave them the, the, uh, the outcome of his death, burial, and resurrection. They already knew these things were going to happen, but yet and still, they still did not have a clue of what he was going to go through. Amen. None. Right. They did not have a clue that Jesus Christ was going to be whipped until the flesh was going to be ripped off his body. Mama. They did not have a clue that Jesus Christ was going to have a crown of thorns pressed onto his head. They did not have a clue that he was going to have to take his own cross and carry it to Calvary's heel. Right. They did not have a clue that he was going to be nailed through his hands and feet on that cross. They did not have a clue that he was going to be pierced in his side and blood and water was going to pour from him. Yeah. They did not have a clue of all these things. So why in the world would Jesus ask them to pray for him and something that they had, didn't have a clue of what he was going to do? Amen. 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 Why? Amen. Yes. My, my, my original message was some journeys that we was going to have to take alone. Uh -huh. yes. and, and that was, was going to be my original title. Some journeys you're going to have to take alone. Amen. Yes. That's right. Some things we, we do have to take alone. And some things we just won't, won't understand. Amen. Some things spouses won't understand. All right. Yes. With, with your own so. spouse. It is so. That you're going to have to go through, and you're going to have to go through it alone. Amen. 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 Not only would they not only they not understand what Jesus was going to have to go through. Also, when he told them that you're going to betray, uh, one of you going to betray me, every last one of them said, "Lord, is it me?" Yeah. <laughs> so why would you want somebody to pray for you? And, and, and none of them even knew that they were going to betray you. That's right. And that's just my take on it. You know, that's that's just my take. I don't know the real reason why. I'm just saying from a from a humanistic standpoint, these are the reasons why I feel like Jesus. I mean, and plus, he's God in the flesh. Amen. This is God in the flesh. God in the flesh really don't need nobody to pray for him. But from his fleshly standpoint, these are the reasons why. Why would he ask his disciples to pray for him? Amen. They didn't. I, can I put it in plain terms? Yeah. They really didn't believe that everything that he said was going to come to pass. Because if they did, then when they, when they finally did come to uh, uh, arrest Jesus, then Peter wouldn't have cut off the man's ear. That's right. Okay. I don't know. That's right. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, move on. All right. Now, now, the verse, uh, where was that? All right. Verse 41. This is, this is where, where I want to get to. Verse 41. Then he says, okay, he already said, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Now, verse 41, this is where I want to get to. Then he says, watch and pray. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about praying. Yeah. He says, watch and pray. And here's the thing that, that really strikes me about what Jesus said next. He didn't just say watch and pray. He even told them what to pray about. That's right. He says watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now here it is, Jesus, at the end of his ministry. And remember that. Remember that I said that. This is at the end of his ministry. He's telling them, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Now, remember, enter not into, te into temptation because this, this is a big deal. This is a, a, a very important point that Jesus is making to his disciples. Okay? So remember that. Uh, 
Here you have Jesus at the end of his ministry putting the emphasis on not entering in temptation by way of prayer. To his disciples, uh, his disciples are the ones who will go on in faith, continuing the ministry of Christ, establish the church, and enduring their own personal sufferings. But before he could begin his ministry, he had to put aside his deity and be proven and tested like a man. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. At the end of his ministry, he put emphasis on not entering temptation by way of prayer to his disciples. His disciples are the ones who will go on in the faith, continuing the ministry of Christ Jesus, yeah. establishing the church, and, in, and, and uh, enduring uh, their own personal sufferings. Uh -huh. And you've got to remember that too. Now, I, I, I start from the end, now I'm going to take it to the beginning. I'm going to read this again. But before he could begin his ministry, he had to put aside his deity and be proven and tested just like a man. Uh, Hebrews, 4, uh, Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched yeah. with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted oh. like as we are, yet without sin. Yes. So Jesus Christ was tempted just like we are mm -hmm. at all points. Y'all yes. Yes. follow me so far? Yes. I ain't lost nobody else. All right. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Now, I told you I'm going to take you from the end to the beginning. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to start at verse 1, and, and once again, this is nothing, uh, nothing new, but I think it uh, needs to be highlighted as far as what he did and what he did and the example that he left for us. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yes. Jesus answered this temptation by the word of God. And we find that, and you don't have to go there, but if you want to write it down, you can. Jesus answered this temptation uh, uh, by the word of God. And that word is found in Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Yes. That word. We're going a little further. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city mm -hmm. and seeth him on a pinnacle of the, of the temple. Yes. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Uh -huh. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Yes. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Once again, Jesus answered this temptation. Once again, by the word of God. Amen. And we find uh, that word in Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Y'all see the pattern here. Y'all see the example here. <coughs> Every time there is a temptation, Jesus answered temptation with the word of God. Amen. Uh -huh. <coughs> Verse 8. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, 
For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Hallelujah. And again, Amen. Jesus answered this temptation with the word in Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 13. Once again, every time temptation comes our way, there's only one way to fight temptation. We fight temptation with the word. Amen. There's no other way that we can fight temptation. Amen. We fight temptation with the word. Amen. The word of God is quick and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right. Right. We use the word just like Jesus used the word. He gave us the authority to use the word. We can use we use the word in Jesus' name. Yes. We can use the word. Apostle says all the time, we have the authority to be able to speak to any situation. Right. We can speak right. the word of God. Amen. That is what it's there for. Yes. So when temptation comes, we use the word. Amen. That's how we fight Amen. temptation. Amen. That's how we fight. If we want to get the, the enemy to flee, that don't mean that he's going to stop forever. That's right. That's right. But he's going to stop right then because we just use the word. When he comes back again, guess what? We use the word. Now, let me say this real quick. Uh, it says, uh, uh, in, in Hebrews, it says, Jesus was uh, at all points tempted just as we are, yet without sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, it only gives, well, it only shows three uh, uh, instances of temptation. Okay? It only gives three. Now, although, now, I'm not a, I'm not a, a scholar or anything, and I don't know if all those temptations came while he was the 40 days in the wilderness or, or the three years in his ministry or what. I don't know, and it really don't matter. All I know, the word says that at all points, he was tempted just like we are. Right. So that means whether it was in the wilderness or during his walk in the earth, he was tempted just as we are. So the point that I'm trying to make is every temptation that we face, he faced. Amen. And he fought it with the word. Amen. 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 Come on, there man. Are, That's right. There are, there are, 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 are there are folks that are in the church that uh, don't act like they're in the church. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm saying. There are, there, are, there are folks that are in the church that, that don't act like they are in the church. And if we're not careful, we'll let them draw us away. Uh, we'll get mad, angry, we'll get upset, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, once again, to use uh, uh, one of the apostles' terms, they'll make us so mad, we want to slap their jaw because they can be tempting. Yeah. They, they, can, they, can really, they can really tempt you. A whole lot of times, they can be family members. Uh, they will tempt you in, 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 in certain ways and, and, and stuff. But we have a mandate. We have a mandate. Amen. And that mandate is to, just like Jesus left the mandate to the disciples, to go on and further the ministry, yes. to win souls, yes. to yes. preach with repentance, Amen. to preach salvation, Amen. that no one be lost. Yes. That's the same mandate that we have. Yes. Yes. That's why the, that's, that is a part of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the title of the message, a blameless, more effective Amen. ministry. Amen. Temptation is going to come to each and every one of us. Yes. But we can't be blameless if we yield to every single temptation that we find in all of us. Yes, we, we, listen, none of us are perfect. That's right. And sometimes we fall. But we can't keep falling for the same thing over and over again. Yeah. 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 And that's a problem. Like Apostle said, you know, he, he's, he's got to the place now where he's, he's moving from, from this level to this level to this level. I don't know about you, but I have gotten to the place where certain things really make me uncomfortable now that used to, that used to be not part of me. Right. Now I, I, I really get uncomfortable around certain situations, around certain people. I get uncomfortable now. Where, you know, now I used to ha ha he he, now it's like, I, I, it's, 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 I cringe at certain things. Yes. And I know that that's growth, and I know people look at me funny, and they say, well, Jeff thinks he's this, and Jeff thinks he's that. No, Jeff is trying to, 
I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to be obedient to what they have said. It's not that why am I in this thing? Why are any of us in this thing if we're not trying to grow, if we're not trying to change? I tell my wife all the time, I say, you know what? There are certain families that I've got to distance myself from. I, 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 I've got to. We have got to. But anyway, temptation. And like I said, a lot of the temptation will come from those they call ourselves blood. Yeah. 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 Blood is thicker than water, Jeff, but so is water oil. <laughs> After his temptation in the wilderness experience is when he began calling his disciples and started his public ministry. His public ministry starts with probably the most recognizable teaching, which is known as the Sermon on the Mount. There are two things I want to point out about the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and one of them I'm just now saying. I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I've been in the, in the, uh, the ministry. I started at Great Joy in 1998, and I've been in the ministry from 98 to now, what's that, 20-something years? I ain't no mathematician either. Um, 26 years, I believe that is. 26 years I've been in the ministry, and 10 years I've been ordained. And I, one thing that I'm just now pointing out, and I, 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 I'm just now seeing, and, I, and I'll show it to you here in a minute. But um, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And like I said, this is going to take us back to the, like I said, start from the end, we're going to finish with the beginning. Uh, chapter 5 says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and taught them, saying, all right? Now, let me get for you, because I, I, I promise you I did not see this before, and uh, I don't know how many times I, I read that. It may not be a big deal to you, but it's a, it, you know, certain, certain things just, uh, I just didn't, I never saw it before. Now that was uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And let me read that for you in the... Let me read that for you in the Amplified. And the Amplified said, And when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And then he began to teach them, saying, and I'm not going to go into uh, the Beatitudes, but I just, I just want to reiterate what he's saying here, and I'm going to read one more, and I don't usually uh, read the uh, message version, but let me read this message version and, and just uh, hear, see what it says in the message. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, mm -hmm. He climbed a hillside. Yeah. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Mm -hmm. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. Now the thing that I never really saw before until now is the whole while I, I looked at the Sermon on the Mount, you know, these two chapters, like I said, you know, the longest uh, uh, sermon from uh, chapter 5 to uh, chapter 7, I believe it is. The whole time when you, when you talk about the multitudes, you're thinking that Jesus is, is specifically speaking to the multitudes. He was, but he was specifically speaking to his disciples. And I never, I never saw that before. This whole while, I'm thinking multitude, multitude, multitude. Yes, the multitude was there, the multitude was listening, but he was talking to his disciples. All right. 
I, I, I tell you, I never, I never realized that mm -hmm. until now. It's amazing how God will illuminate some yes. things in you That's after you've right. seen it over and over and over again. Yes, yes. Now, again, I, the reason, the reason why I say that, you remember I said before, at the end of His ministry when He was talking to His disciples and telling them how to pray, that you be not in, into, uh, into, into temptation. His disciples that he was talking to. And he may put emphasis on that. Okay? He put emphasis on that. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. And I, and I promise you, I'm almost done. Really, I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 6 and 13. And we know that this is the, the Lord's Prayer. But once again, I was... I, 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 we... It's commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, but it's also the disciples' prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Matthew 6 and 13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just Matthew, but 6 and 13. Now, think about this. This is when he first came onto the scene and he first started his public ministry. Look at the emphasis, and this is, he started in verse, he started in verse 9. And verse 9 is when he started to teach them how to pray. Mm -hmm. And what to pray for. He gets down to verse 13, and this is the emphasis that he put on, and lead us not into temptation. My God, I don't know if y'all see this thing like I see this thing. Yeah. His disciples, he's talking to his disciples. At the end of his ministry, at the beginning of his ministry, his focus was on his disciples, those who were going to go on and carry out this ministry. He knew that temptation was going to be a big, big deal for them. And he put emphasis on praying about temptation, that you be not led into temptation, that that was going to be one of your biggest struggles. That you keep this thing in prayer. That you keep this thing in, in, in the forefront of your mind. Yeah. My goodness, I know y'all probably don't see it like I see it. But thank God that at the very beginning of his ministry, this, you're going to face temptation. Keep this at the forefront of your prayer. And at the end of his ministry, pray that you fall not into temptation. Yes. My God. <laughs> That's how much focus, and that's how much, how much, uh, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Last thing I'm on, last thing I'm on, the, on one, one last, well, I got a couple more scriptures, but I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm going to give you one more, and then that's it. Just get this one scripture, and then I'm going to quit. No, no, no. One scripture, one scripture. Look at James. 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 Go back to find James. I know it's in here. All right, here we go. James 12. 12 through 14. James, oh, James 1, I'm sorry. James 1, 12 through 14. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Every man is, in, is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. What I want, what I desire, and so on and so forth. And I could go on and on and on in a whole nother uh, way, but I'm not because I told y'all uh, this was going to be my last scripture. But I will, I will end with, uh, with, with this one last thing. And uh, it's funny that uh, Apostle, uh, I'm going to leave with, uh, with Apostle's uh, uh, gospel this morning. His gospel this morning was, uh, 
when Jesus told uh, his servants to go into the hedges and highways and compel them to come, in order to compel, we cannot allow temptation to cause us to compromise who we are. We cannot cause temptation to cause us to take the easy way out. And temptation cannot cause us to lay aside the Word of God. Amen. It is the Word of God plus nothing. Amen. And we can defeat any temptation. So when we go out into the hedges and highways, because when we go out in the hedges and highways, guess what's waiting for us? Temptation. Temptation. So we better be prepared when we go out there. Amen. 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 God bless you.